This film is brought to you by Pain Management. Work with an experienced yoga teacher specializing in pain management. Learn how to ease your pain with private yoga sessions customized to your specific needs. www.yogatraveler.online slash pain2. Hello. Let's learn today how to ease back and hip pain with 10 simple yoga poses that anyone can do. These are great for beginners and you can do them in your home space as you see me here using just tools that we have in our homes and positioning our bodies correctly to open up the back, stretch the back, open up the hips and most important, ease pain. Let's begin. First pose, legs up the wall. This is a very gentle pose that will relax your back and give you some circulation as the legs pull the blood flow down toward the heart and the head. Easiest way to get into this pose is first of all, to have a blank wall, nothing in the way of your legs as you're going to extend your legs up the wall. Put your hips right up against the wall and then start to shift, shimmy onto your back until you're laying with the legs extended. My hips are still right up against the wall. And I like to just extend the arms out to the sides. Beautiful pose to relax the back, no pressure in my back. All the blood flow moving down toward the heart and toward the stomach. Great for circulation, good for digestion. My hamstrings can relax. We can ease pain there. Sometimes the pain that we experience comes from the hamstrings, which resonates into the hips. So all of those areas just get to relax. You would want to stay in a pose like that for about five minutes. Give the body a little bit of time to relax into the pose and, and, and let go of tension that you might have. Pose is supine spinal twist. You see, I have a pillow with me. This is a specific yoga bolster, but you do not have to have a bolster. You can just have a long pillow. The back of a couch cushion works well, as long as it's fairly firm and long enough that you can lay the torso of your body. See, that's about as long as my torso from my hip, a little bit higher than my shoulder. So that's a good estimation of what you could use. We're going to utilize this to ease pain. Two different ways that we might do this in this spinal twist. First way, you'll place your hips close enough to the bolster that you can let your legs drop down onto that bolster. And then you would turn your gaze and your head over the opposite shoulder. So my knees are going one way, my arm and my gaze are going the opposite way. What this is doing is letting the hip upper hip relax all of this area here it's opening up through the chest it's giving a twist to our back so that spinal rotation in the back feels really nice to release pain in your back and you would of course do this on both sides so you would move the bolster to the other side or the pillow to the other side and twist the opposite direction the second way that you can execute this twist is by placing the pillow in between your legs, like a body pillow. And then you would fold over to the side as well. And what this is doing is it's elevating the right hip. It's keeping your legs maybe more in a hip width distance, which eases pain in the hips and through the sacrum in the low back. So it's just creating a little less pressure. If you had two pillows, you could put one on the floor one in between your legs, just depending on your natural flexibility. The next pose is Supta Baddha Konasana. And we will again use our pillow for this pose. So we place it on the floor and sit up against it. So it's right up against the base of the back into the hips. Place your feet together like a butterfly and lay yourself down on your back. The arms fall off the side of that bolster on each side. What this is doing is opening up this part of our legs, the internal rotators. So releasing the pressure through the hip flexors and through the inner thigh and into the groin. And then the pillow is supporting the curve of our back. 
And this pose is meant to be one that we rest in. We just hold and we let go of our tension as we hold the pose. You can stay here for five to 10 minutes if you can even last that long and enjoy the benefits of the body being held by the bolster and the open release that you will feel. And a very simple pose that's fun to do and feels lovely. This is Apanasana, which is legs into your chest. So you'll lay on your back and you'll pull your knees into your chest. Simple, simple, easily done and very effective. Couple things this is doing, it's pressing the low back to the floor as we pull our knees in. We tilt our pelvis to the sky and lengthen the back. The back is very supported from the floor, completely flat on the ground, and it's just gentle to hold our legs in so we give a little natural squeeze to our hips. If this feels too much, you can do one leg at a time. So extend one leg out and pull the other knee into the chest. This is even gentler. We place the foot on the floor, knee bent, and pull one in. So you would hold one side, and then you would switch to the other side. Again, meant to be held for a couple of moments, a few good long breaths, this can also do really good for relieving gas and easing uh, digestive issues as well. Next pose, happy baby, another fun one. Let's lay on our back and reach down and either grab your knees or grab the arches of your feet. This will open up again through the inner thigh and groin. So we're just creating space for the sacrum in our hips. And as we press down, either on the knees or on the feet, we put a little added pressure into those hip flexors, and I like to rock back and forth, like you might see a baby doing, who's grabbed their feet. This opens up the space in the sacrum, so lots of release for the hips. And the sacrum is connected right to the back, so you'll feel that open sensation in the low back. Our next pose is Upavista Konasana, wide V sit. So you see I have pillows, this time two, because we might need two. This can be a difficult pose for many people. So we extend both legs out and make the toes pointed to the sky. You see how that is. We get as wide as we can through the inner thigh and groin area into the hip flexors. And of course, we're opening up through the space in the back as well. That's why this relieves hip and back pain at the same time. Then it is to lean forward. This is why we have two pillows. Leaning forward in this pose can be very difficult. You might feel some pull through the inner thigh. So therefore, maybe two poses or two pillows. We lean forward, but we don't have to go quite as far because we're leaning our body weight into the pillows. The only thing you wanna make sure for sure that you pay attention to is that the toes stay pointed to the sky. The minute we let our feet roll forward, we're gonna lose that internal rotation, that opening through the inner thigh that we're trying to achieve to get the stretch through here. So try this pose, lean into it. Again, you just need to hold and breathe. I like to use my breath as a tool in this pose. So we take a breath, Inhale, and we exhale. And if you notice that the body has started to ease, then you might be able to deepen. Maybe I can remove this pillow and get a little deeper. Take a breath, inhale, exhale. I might be able to go a little bit deeper with the exhales. The body releases, releases a little pain, a little strain, and we deepen, but only when we're exhaling and only when we're not in stress. We should never force ourselves to pull into a pose that is too much for our body to handle. Instead, we should take the time to ease into it, to stay in the pose for a few minutes and give the body a chance to adjust.
next pose for easing hip and back pain is fire log. We've done some inner thigh opening. Now it's time to, to work on the external rotators, the outer edges of the hips to release pain. So we're going to sit and stack one leg on top of the other. So you see that I have a gap here. That's okay. You might have that as well. We have one foot on top of our knee and the other foot right below the knee. Then we lean forward. And as I lean forward, that gap in my leg does go down a little bit. And I can feel this through the outer edges of my hips and into my sacrum in the low back. Now this might be too intense for you. You'll know if your leg is way up here and you can't bring it down. That's okay, just try sitting crisscross. Simple crisscross and folding forward. You may still feel the sensation in the outer hips. You would do one side and then you would do the other side. Keep the method the same, fire lock or crisscross. The goal is to feel sensation, to feel like there's stretch and there's release happening in your body. The depth doesn't matter quite as much or the form doesn't matter quite as much, just as long as you're feeling that sensation. And as your body adapts, as you build flexibility, you can move into the deeper pose. Next pose, pigeon pose. This will also work the external rotators of the hips, and it'll start to get down into our hamstring, into the sciatic area, which we haven't quite focused on yet with hip release. So this will do a little bit of that. This pose is not very easy, and we sometimes use things like a block. So this is my yoga block. If you don't have a block, you can use a stack of books or a soft blanket that you wad up into a shape. So let's begin. We start by placing one foot in front of us, the knee bent, and this is the area that we're going to be focusing on. As I ease my leg back, this leg has a tendency to want to tuck underneath because this is easier on my hip than pulling it out. So this is why you might utilize a block. You might place that block underneath your hip so that you can keep that structure but allow yourself a little support, a little lift. Then you start to lean forward over the leg. This back leg is straight as you can make it into the hip. Let me demonstrate on the other side so you can see another angle. Bringing the other leg forward. You can see how I'm trying to make a 90 degree angle with that leg. The block perhaps underneath your hip, length as much as you can behind you and lean forward. Try not to let this tuck under. You will not good, get as good of a stretch. See if you can extend it forward and lower yourself into the pose. Hold the pose for as long as you can Good 10 breaths or so is excellent to feel the benefits and make sure you do both sides of that pigeon pose. Next pose, Anjanyasana. This pose will start to get into the hip flexor at the front of the hip. So we've done internal rotators, external rotators, the back of the leg with our pigeon pose, sciatic and hamstrings, and now we're working on the very front piece of the hips. So this has been very comprehensive with easing hip pain. We'll start by taking one leg forward, this is my right leg, and extend the left leg back. This right knee is really important to align with the right ankle. If you pull your, your foot back, there's too much pressure on this right knee. So bring your foot at least at 90 degrees, if not, the toes a little bit further forward. Then our weight presses forward and downward. This is what will give us the stretch through the front of the hip in the psoas. You can bring your hands to your knees. You can bring your hands to the floor. Sometimes it helps to elevate the hands on a block or some books. You can also reach your arms overhead. 
for the full Anjan Yasana pose. Hold for at least five breaths, nice and slow breaths on each side, and then switch to the other leg. Extend forward, see that 90 degree angle, make sure you have that position. Tilt the hips down and forward. So I'm putting a little pressure downward to open up that space through the sacrum, through the psoas. Reach your arms up, have them on your knee, have them on the ground, or perhaps on blocks. Hold for five breaths or so to feel the full benefits of the stretch. Last pose of our 10 guaranteed ways to ease hip and back pain is child's pose. And I'm pointing to my pillow because we might utilize the pillow again in this pose. So child's pose. In this pose, we let our knees open a little bit wider than hip width distance. There's a little space to come forward and that opens up the sacrum through the low back area where our hips and our back connect and can cause strain. And then we lean forward. Now my pillow's here because we might lay upon the pillow to give us a little elevation. Some of us are not maybe flexible enough in the hips or in the legs or in the knees to lean all the way forward. This is definitely an option. See how this lengthens out through the back and opens up. So you may try this, or if that feels like too much, utilize your pillow. Take a little pressure off of the legs and off of the hips. It's okay if the hips don't completely rest on the heels in this pose. Not everybody's do. Perhaps the longer you stay in the pose, the deeper you might be able to get. Another great benefit of the pose for the back is it lengthens the sides of the body so well as we reach our arms forward and lengthen. So we feel the benefits in the low back, in the, in the sides of the body and through the shoulders. So the entire back carriage plus all that opening up through the sacrum in the low back. Thank you for joining me. Ease your pain every day by joining my pain management membership. You will join me twice a month for private yoga sessions where I will teach you how to target and release your specific pain. Keep the pain away by practicing yoga on your own with two recorded yoga lessons a week that meet your pain management goals. Find the membership at www.yogatraveleronline.com slash pain two.